Today on the show, we discuss the life of Adam Jensen and how his abilities unwittingly turned him into a pawn of the Illuminati. Welcome to Lore Party, the podcast that explores the stories, characters, and universes of our favorite video games. I'm Connor. And I'm Michael. And Michael, it's a pleasure to be on the mic with you for the first time. Let me just say that right off the bat. Yeah, it's it's always good to uh, hop back into the uh, main Lore Party shows. I'm usually uh, uh, kept away in sort of my corner of a uh, minigame a little bit, so it's always good to uh, hop back in uh, to the regular Lore Party show and uh, talk about video game stories with you guys absolutely it was so nice of you to loan yourself to us uh make sure to thank you for that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's great to have you on should be a good time today we're talking about adam jensen from the deus ex franchise uh, as a part of cyberpunk week actually so pretty exciting stuff i i have been looking forward to talking about deus ex haven't had an opportunity yet but cyberpunk week is a I think a perfect time for it. Yeah. And I think like uh, Deus Ex is, for me is one of those games that it's, it, it has a special place for me where I kind of re replay at least the first Deus Ex game once every few years or so. I mm -hmm. think that's kind of like the big meme of that game is that sometimes you forget it exists. And once you remember it, you always want to play through it again. And it's always how it's been for me. And so it's a uh, good to talk about one of my, one of my favorite games. But that does bring us to Human Revolution, kind of the first part of our discussion here, because that introduces us to our hero, Adam Jensen. Adam Jensen, uh, by all appearances, he's, he's a regular dude. He's, uh, you know, just a normal guy, uh, former cop. Now he's private security. When we first meet him, he's private security for one of the biggest companies in the world that manufactures cybernetic prosthetic implants or augmentations. In fact, in, in the world that Jensen lives in, Augmentations are becoming both incredibly advanced, like you'd be amazed at what they're capable of, and they're becoming ever so increasingly common in this world, like more and more people have them. Yeah, and one of the things that is really interesting is that not only is it becoming more prevalent, it's now becoming sort of outright bougie to do <laughs> because right, yeah. like, because in throughout throughout the game you come across uh, what are called limb clinics. Uh, which mm -hmm. are these clinics that you go to to you know get your get your upgrades, get them installed, upgrade upgrade your upgrades, uh, and just make sure that you have you know these these things that you need. And so it, it's kind of like you know going into your local Apple store, and that that's kind of that's kind of the interesting setup for me as being a longtime fan of the series was how they introduced the concept of the augmentation to the world because that is a very high concept to do and to try to recontextualize it in a way that is not just a big techno babble lore dump it's more of just a hey here's this cool new tech product you probably like tech products you should probably get this because hey your friends are doing it and you want to be like your friends right exactly that that is a very lifelike way to kind of do the world building Mm -hmm. that otherwise might be really difficult in a game like this. But yeah, they really sell that concept of these augmentations are not only common, they're trendy. And uh, that's how they do that. So that's a great point. And not only are they trendy and catching on and they're everywhere, they're really kind of changing the conversation about what it is to be human in this world. The, the, the modern society that Adam Jensen lives in, it's starting to be shaped by this conversation of, are people losing their humanity? And I think that's definitely something that pops up a lot in many cyberpunk uh, media, whether it's a game, movie, book, what have you, you start to see that question. And in fact, in Human Revolution, we are introduced to a group, or uh, several groups actually, but I guess a few in particular, who are on the side of quote-unquote human purity. And they're starting to get more and more extreme in the ways they push back on this advancement of augmented limbs and body parts. Not only on the technology itself, but as you mentioned, Michael, the way that it's kind of introduced to humanity and being pushed on people. Uh, not everyone's happy about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's it's you, you do come across these groups who are 
more rejecting of these augmentations wants the purity of the human experience to be a thing. And it re reminds me a lot of uh, actually like the sort of doping scandals that have been in you know recent mm. years on like Olympics and other kind of athletic events. And you have this sort of conflict of, well, what is it to be human? It, you know, the, we have we do have in, in in real life right now, we do have the ability to enhance the physical aspects of being human and is the ability to reject that is that a good thing or are you and by you i mean humanity uh holding yourself back where you may or may not should be exactly yeah and it's it is interesting the other parallel there in kind of the doping scandal or the athletic sphere kind of has that rationality of well everyone's doing it why shouldn't i and that kind of comes back to it, 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 you can see that happen in almost any uh, advancement or you know new technology that is thrust upon humanity. It's like, well, if everyone's adopting this technology, why don't I do it? Uh, it's it's a bit of a group mentality. And yeah, like th there are people who just are of the opinion, you know, the more you replace your flesh with machinery, uh, are you sacrificing your soul? And I guess depending on how you look at it, unfortunately or fortunately, they are in the minority. Uh, they they're they're on the losing side of the battle against uh the advancement of augmentations yeah and, and yeah and it's a thing where uh, also you know being part of being a big fan of this series for so long i know how it ends because human revolution and mankind divided are prequels despite <laughs> despite them looking a lot better and more fidelity than the the older that's games. a good they are point prequels. so you know yeah, having you know, having played those games, I know how this world ends. <laughs> it ends with it ends in, in a lot of ways the the in a weird place in which for the greater population, the purity of humanity, that side of things ends up winning out. Almost nobody has augmentations in in the future. Uh, but when they are first introduced, yeah, it, it, it does become it does become this big thing of, well, I need to get this. I need to be the best I can be be all I can be. And in some ways for reasons that we'll, we'll mention during this, uh, the show, uh, there, that part of thing has been completely rejected. And now only, you know, the super, super rich, super fancy have the ability to augment themselves in a lot of ways, even heal themselves through the use of medicine. It's a pretty dark place, but it starts off with, you know, human revolution. It be, it is this big new fancy thing that, people want to have that's that's a great point uh we have to keep in mind that human revolution and mankind divided take place before the original deus ex i, I keep forgetting that <laughs> but yeah. but no that's a that's a great point because this progression toward only the wealthy and the powerful being able to have access to this revolutionary technology that's actually kind of part of the plan for a certain subset of people because uh while everyone's grappling with this question of do augmentations make you less human? And Adam Jensen is grappling with, you know, the implications of working for a major augmentation company. Uh, while all that's happening, there are a, there's a shadowy group of power brokers, malicious actors. Uh, they're basically the Illuminati. In fact, they're called that in the game. <laughs> they, yeah. It's literally the Illuminati. They're not even sneaky about it. Um, but certain people are taking steps to influence these global events. They're kind of pulling strings behind all of it. And a, a major end goal of theirs is completely control the flow of information because it, that's all digital by this point and have all the information working in their favor. But they're, they're also pushing these augmentations on people. And, you know, we start getting into this question of are augmentations and more broadly speaking, does advanced technology make people less in control of their lives? I think um, there's a lot of arguments you can make about, you know, the the way information is presented in this game, the way news is controlled in this game, the way the media is mm -hmm. manipulated in this game already controls people's lives. And augmentations seem to be yet another piece of that puzzle. Yeah. And, we, and when we start off with Inhuman Revolution, the very um, sort of the prologue of the game, you are introduced to Adam Jensen as this sort of almost John McClane like figure in the first Die Hard movie uh -huh. where he's just he's just this every man. He's like a former cop. He's just there. He's just there to do uh, do his normal job at this big company, Serif Industries. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, one day a bunch of really shady folks <laughs> in to make to put it lightly to say the least yeah, break, <laughs> yeah to to you know, uh, you know basically commit a terrorist act against Seraf Industries you know like shoot Adam Jensen in the head and then uh, it, it's almost become like this weird meme around the game of Adam Jensen keeps saying that oh he didn't ask for these all all these augmentations I never because, asked for this <laughs> yeah he, I, he, I never asked for this but no he he does. And he, he just gets shot in the head and then there, the Seraph Industries is like well we have the ability to bring him back let's just do that and while we're at it we may as well just make him better right um and then it sort of becomes that's the initial excuse of making things better uh but then you know certainly down the line you know like you mentioned things get a little bit more and more manipulated who is actually behind these augmentations there is a weird sequence almost in the middle of the game that I almost forgot about uh, when we first started uh, planning this episode. But there's like one mission in which uh, you're just told, hey, go to this cl- limb clinic to get an upgrade. And you can just go, OK, OK, sure. <laughs> get, yeah, you go to limb clinic, you get the upgrade. Like uh, prior to then, even after that, you're not told to do any of these upgrades, but you go to this limb clinic. They just say, uh, OK, pfft. Here you go. And they, Adam just, just goes, what's that? And they're like, I don't know. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, it's like, hey, it's just an upgrade. Don't worry about it. And just it's, sign and here. It's like, yeah. And it's like, well, what exactly did I do? Who mandated this? Right. And yeah, it's 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 a funny thing. And also you bring up a, a fun, uh, not fun, but an interesting point about the, the media is that you see frequently throughout uh, Human Revolution this uh, newscaster who is just you know for the most part you know just doing newscastery stuff you know here's the news blah 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 but then you know over time gets more and more opinionated more and more manipulated and by the end of the game you realize that this newscaster is just an ai created by the illuminati yeah and it's just here's here's their mouthpiece and it's just you know, disguised as just being a faceless corporate entity giving you the news yeah it's not a not the most subtle uh tool to manipulate the flow of information i've ever seen <laughs> it's yeah really yeah and eventually off. yeah eventually you know someone is going to find out you know, who's this news reporter we can't find her that's suspicious <laughs> but in the fiction of the game it makes it it makes sense that okay here's this here's this thing giving us the news right by the way this thing is from the illuminati <laughs> <laughs> but shh we don't we don't talk about that yeah <laughs> but you do raise a very good point about the way adam jensen is uh kind of led around on a leash a little bit like after the attack uh after he's brought back to life he's rebuilt basically he's a six million dollar man with all yep. these uh, augmentations well probably more like six billion uh <laughs> with all this new technology packed into him he has a new lease on life but he's also searching for answers like who were these people why they do what they did and how do I get my life back or how do I get some you know, closure or whatever? And on this search for information and for answers and for, you know, for absolution, Adam is, you know, on a quest, but he's also he has a carrot on a stick held in front of him a little bit. And you mentioned the the upgrades. He doesn't know what's in them. He doesn't know what was put in his body when he was rebuilt. He doesn't know a lot of things. He's just uh, he's being led around by his nose. And that actually brings us to our main argument today is that throughout human revolution and mankind divided, Adam Jensen is really completely manipulated. Like his goals are kind of given to him and he thinks he's acting for himself and for the good of other people for the most part. But really there are more powerful people above him kind of uh, pointing the way for him. And I think Michael, you pointed out that that's actually common to the original deus ex as well isn't it yeah it's 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 actually a common theme throughout the entire deus ex series from one uh invisible war which uh hopefully we won't have to talk about because (laughs) that game's not very good um and uh, human revolution and mankind divided is that you are constantly being told what to do by various different players Uh, in the first deus ex you are uh, playing as J.C. Denton, kind of similar setup to Adam Jensen. He's just this you know, cop working for um, uh, UNATCO, mm-hmm. which is just a, an anti-terrorist organization in the first day of sex game. And you're there. You're just given a mission to it's probably one of the most famous levels in any game where it's you have to infiltrate the Statue of Liberty, take out some terrorists and retrieve a vaccine for a deadly disease. And then. Throughout the game, you're given more and more of these missions. You, as you talk and 
to more and more people, you get a broader perspective on the world and you sort of think that, okay, well, maybe the things that I am being told are not the truth or are at least uh, a little bit obfuscating the truth. And you know, about halfway through the first day of sex game, you realize that, hey, this anti-terrorist organization is, again, the Illuminati. <laughs> Say it with Say me. Say it with me, folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, the Illuminati has been confirmed and they're in all the Deus Ex games. Uh, but, you know, it's similar to Invisible War. You know, you're, you are just being told things and rarely you ha are given any personal agency. You have some choice on how you want to do some of these missions that you are taking on. But very rarely do you as both the player and the character you're playing have this sort of personal like oh this is weird i need to figure this out you yeah. are constantly being told to figure things out and told to do things until usually around the end of the game that you are given this big personal decision on okay i want to i want the world to be this way now um and it's you over the course of the game having sort of that strength and courage to make this choice for yourself Right. And that's, that's so important to uh, keep in mind is that really interesting, uh, almost like paradox between the choice the player is given. Like, oh, you, you can decide what augmentations Adam invests in and what he levels up and what he uses and how he approaches situations. Do you kill or, you know, stun people? Like, are you this way or that way? But the, the character is on a very narrow path and that, that path has kind of been set in front of him. It's, it's an interesting paradox. It leads to some really interesting places where we, you know, we, we go along with Adam on this journey throughout human revolution. He eventually learns that the guy who basically invented or originated augmentation technology, a man named Hugh Darrow, Nobel Prize winning scientist. He's a hell of a guy. It, it's all his brainchild. Basically, augments are his baby. Um, but it turns out he's behind this massive conspiracy to hijack the bodies of millions of augmented people throughout the world by kind of like taking control of what's uh, what's called a biochip in their bodies and it's, it's it's a crazy revelation and adam learns that darrow plans to do this uh with a with a signal that turns augmented people into mindlessly violent homicidal maniacs that uh just kill everyone they see and we I, it's it's a I remember like coming across this twist at the end of human evolution when I was playing it. And I thought, Holy shit, Jesus Christ, what's happening? Like, this is crazy. And you know, you actually see it happening. You see what's called the aug incident in the game where people are just hacking each other to bits with their robo arms and stuff. And, um, Adam is like completely in the dark about why this is happening. Yeah. And then that's kind of like a funny, well, not funny, but a, a fun thing of seeing the origins of, because you because like i mentioned like you know, i've i've played through the series sort of as it was released i know the world it's about 20 30 years down the line from when um human revolution and mankind divided um are placed in the timeline it's about uh 30 so years mm -hmm. after that so i already know that the world has gone to shit uh so i figured like oh wow this is the inception point this is where the world has gone to hell this is why almost no one is augmented anymore and it's this you know a secret thing and you know that there is of course another game that you know expands on this a little bit further uh but it's also an interesting um take on sort of the act of just trends in general and it's a, a, a like a big part of not only the deus ex franchise but cyberpunk culture and cyberpunk stories as a whole is this weird dichotomy of incredibly advanced technology technology that surpasses pretty much anything humanity can think of to the point where almost technology has to create its own technology for it to advance uh but then it's also like okay we have this and now humanity there is a great swath of humanity who is just completely destitute have almost nothing and this is sort of the this moment in human revolution is almost is almost the breaking point you see that this this trend this trust in this technology, the systems that allowed this technology to thrive, this is where it breaks. And it's never, you can never go home again and you can never unthink that this is the way it is. 
this technology is no longer trustworthy. And then it goes like, okay, well, is it okay for other people, even if they haven't done anything, to still have this technology? Right. And this is kind of where uh, Mankind Divided is set up as well. Yeah, it, it, the cat's out of the bag at that point. It's not going back in. And like, that's a great point. This is kind of that downward slope where augmentations go from trendy, exciting new technology to a concept that is feared and distrusted. The cyberpunk genre in general, but especially this divergence point, this point in um, human revolution, it raises that very important question. Are you really in control of your own body? And when you when you look at a lot of cyberpunk media and you look at Deus Ex, you know, that, that question comes up a lot. And human revolution confronts that question directly by kind of demonstrating that augmentations, you know, they, they're capable of doing a lot of good for people. They're capable of being a very life-changing and life-saving technology, but it can also be a tool of domination in the wrong hands. Yeah, and that's uh, kind of an interesting point where, uh, just on a similar note, like, are you actually familiar with the creation of the Nobel Prize? I'm actually not. Okay, so th this is kind of an interesting uh, parallel between um, Hudero and um, the inventor of dynamite, Alfred Nobel who, uh, as you can probably tell from his last name, is the uh, sort of creator of the Nobel Prize. And after he invented dynamite, in a similar way to Darrow's invention of the augmentations, it was initially created as a thing of like, okay, well, I'm going to make this thing that is going to allow, I believe the in in initial creation of dynamite was for the creation of an expansion of railroads. So it's like, okay, well, this is going to allow for us as humanity to travel further, to communicate, you know, to you know, blast through mountains and things like that. So we can expand and, you know, grow humanity. And at some point dynamite was used and turned into a weapon. And he was mortified by this, sort of disavowed his invention he can't uninvent it uh but then he wanted to celebrate the goodness of humanity with that it was the creation of the nobel prize and i just think that it was a fun i don't know if it was intentional wow uh but it was it, it was a, at least an interesting parallel that came through when i was sort of playing through that game that's incredible i never thought of that that adds an entirely new dimension to the plot of human revolution though that's really cool well thankfully uh thankfully uh alfred nobel uh created a prize instead of you know trying to turn humanity into uh murderous uh, mecha zombies yeah, yeah. <laughs> zombie people yeah uh, so thankfully he did that instead we can so, all breathe uh, a little yeah. easier knowing that <laughs> yeah darrow darrow had good intentions could have done them a little yeah. bit better yeah next good luck on the next draft though darrow <laughs> Yeah, we'll take a take two on that. Consider that for the next go. Okay, we're going to take a quick break here, but stick around. We'll be right back. We interrupt this podcast for a preview for a different podcast. I'm Bruce, a regular contributor to Lore Party. In the unforgiving world of the gods, there is an endless, vicious cycle of fathers killing sons, brothers killing brothers, and sons killing mothers. But Kratos, the ghost of Sparta, looks to end that cycle with his son Atreus as they journey through the various realms of the Norse pantheon. Tune into our God of War episodes where my co-host Abu and I discuss the latest installment in the God of War series from 2018 and the insightful ways the game creates more depth in a beloved franchise. Just check out our lore party feed and search God of War. It should be easy to find. We now continue your regularly scheduled podcast. We do have one last uh, bit of business that Adam Jensen does address uh, near the end of Human Revolution, and that is kind of the monumental decision that he has to make whether to expose Darrow for his crimes. Let the world know what he did and why he did it, sure, but also, you know, that would doom his career. That would completely set back the science of augmentation probably years, if not decades. Um, but he also has the option to cover for Darrow to sort of erase the, erase the evidence and cover up for him. Or yeah. he can destroy all of the evidence of the entire conspiracy and just sort of let mankind decide for itself. He, he sort of has that sabotage the concept of augmentation, save the concept of augmentation, or just completely wash his hands of all of it. 
he kind of has that left, right, or center sort of uh, decision in front of him. Yeah. And like we've, like we've alluded to earlier, these protagonists of Deus Ex games are rarely in a position to make this kind of decision. This is a, uh, one of the few moments that Adam Jensen is really at the steering wheel of the entire world. But sadly, coming back to this lack of control concept we've talked about, no matter what he chooses to do, the Illuminati are still out there. The truth is out there, yeah. and I'll never stop looking. Uh, <laughs> the Illuminati <laughs> are still out there, and no matter what Adam does, they just adapt and adjust their plans accordingly. They're, they're still going to find a way to spin this to their advantage and to find a way to take control of the situation no matter what. Yeah, it's it's kind of like it's a similar kind of concept to like the Borg in Star Trek or even like the Reapers in the Mass Effect games where it's sort of this thing of both you as players and hu- great, I guess, greater humanity as well are constantly given the illusion of choice. And it's it feels good to be like, yeah, I did this. I am going to save humanity. But it's like the Illuminati is just like. Yeah, we gave you this choice. We're still going to do our thing here. We'll let you make your little choice. That's that's cute. We have our own little we have our own big plans <laughs> right. um instead. Right. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's actually a very poignant way to sum up the bridge between human revolution and mankind divided. Cuz um yeah, no, like like no matter what happens, we still get the world in which mankind divided is set. And that that kind of brings us to another hallmark of the cyberpunk genre which is, as I see it at least, it's this relentless and inevitable pace of technological progression. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you, you've talked about Nobel, uh, you know, Alfred Nobel and the inventing dynamite. Like you said, he couldn't uninvent it. Just, just the, the same way that Hugh Darrow couldn't uninvent augmentations. They're, they're going to continue to progress, and the people in a position to take advantage of it will do so. So despite suffering from the massive setbacks that Adam Jensen you know, gave them, the Illuminati, the people in the shadow of power, they still always find ways to turn technology against common people. And that, that does harken back to our main thesis here, this lack of control and this, you know, this, the way the technology enables the wrong people to control the lives of others, including Adam Jensen. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a depressing thing that it's, I I hate to make references on shows that are not mine, but it's kind of like <laughs> Alien versus Predator. No matter who wins, we lose. Exactly, and, <laughs> and, and also like on a more like on a more like little somewhat serious note, where it's it's not just that you almost see modern parallels on this, right? Where sure. it's you see that there is a lot of um, in, in our world that there is you have this two kind of thoughts where the day-to-day lives of a lot of people in this world or in this country however you want to look at it um is either stagnant or going backwards uh but if you look at greater humanity greater technology uh it is almost impossible to think it is almost wondrous but what good is that wonder if you can't pay your rent <laughs> or exactly. or you can't pay your medical yeah. bills and technology will still progress exponentially so yeah it's going to have a you know someone's going someone's going to have a flying car out there but <laughs> it just probably won't be you it probably won't be you and right. you're probably still going to be in deep financial hardship if you break your arm <laughs> so that's man yeah it's the the way Deus Ex mirrors the real life is uh it's shocking sometimes. Yeah, don't I would say Amazing. don't play Deus Ex One if you want to have a you know good fun time. <laughs> stay, <laughs> stay in Human Revolution Land where augmentations are still pretty cool. If you want an existential crisis, that game's right up your alley. It's, it's good. Times. If you want other games that have existential crises, check out Mini Game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's 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 so well that's so well put though, and it, it does lead us into. That, that scenario of two years later after human revolution takes place, the, the state of the world is kind of as you put it, Michael. It's just sort of a – yeah, technology is maybe still progressing, but a lot of people are being left behind. They're not benefiting from that progression. When Mankind Divided takes place, everyone's still kind of reeling from the events and the implications of the AUG incident when augmented people lost their minds and killed everyone around them. So now there's this 
huge schism, this division between augmented people and non-augmented people. The non-augmented people are largely very distrustful and suspicious of augmented people uh, where the game takes place. Uh, the game takes place in Prague, Czech Republic, and there's a slang term there that augmented people are sometimes referred to. It's a pejorative. Uh, they are sometimes called hansers. I don't know where that comes from, but it's not friendly. No, no. <laughs> it's, you, you hear it in context, like uh, all these damn hansers around yeah. and stuff like that. It's, it's gross. Like it's, it's very, um, it, it's very uncomfortable to hear in like, you know, in an age when racial tension is high, it's, it's kind of an interesting parallel there. Another interesting thing that's happening uh, in Mankind Divided is that, at least in Prague specifically, there are entire populations of augmented people who have been separated into sort of augmented ghettos, which is a, a really weird thing to see in a game, and it's really shocking and kind of uh, a little too real. But um, it's where augmented people are kind of closely monitored. They're kind of kept in a martial law type situation. And the logic there is we can't allow another AUG incident to happen. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how they're presented to the player. So you see a lot of uh, also modern day parallels of sort of, okay, here is the normal humans line. Here is the AUG line. Mm -hmm. where you, This is where you stand. And you know, this, I, I don't, I don't remember if they do something as heavy handed as like having like different restaurants and drinking fountains and stuff like that. But it is kind of that sort of, you know, it, it, is is it a civil right for you to be augmented or is it because you made that choice right. to get augmented that you have to do this? And, you know, sometimes you weren't kind of with Adam Jensen. He was not he didn't have the choice to be augmented, but he did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at that point, is it civil rights or is it you because you made a choice to augment yourself? Is it a choice that you made that is endangering others? Yeah, it's it's definitely a downer. <laughs> Uh, tone that Mankind Divided sets, like, this is the way people are living uh, at this at this point in the timeline. And it's kind of heavy for a player to experience because it does have that shade of, you see shades of apartheid and, mm -hmm. you know, racial tension that really reflected in the game. And this is the world that Adam's operating in now. He's, at this point, he is, uh, he's working for an Interpol task force, International Police Task Force, uh, investigating augmented terrorist activity. Now, even the terrorists have augments. Who, who'd, have thought, who'd have thunk it? Uh, but at the same time, he's also cooperating with an anti-Illuminati hacktivist movement. I know it's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> they, called, they, they, they have a subreddit. <laughs> I guarantee you they have a subreddit, yes. They're, they're called the Juggernaut Collective. And by working with them, Adam hopes that he can gain more clues into the Illuminati's goals, their methods, their identity. He's still kind of trying to track them down and bring them to justice after the events of Human Revolution and the AUG incident. He hasn't given up on that. But while while he's fighting, you know, that battle, the Illuminati's kind of really stepping up their game. They're, they're, they have all these irons in the fire. They have all these plans going on. And a major point of the plot in Mankind Divided is that the Illuminati and its many allies and proxies and whoever, they're working on something called the Human Restoration Act. It's kind of a bit of legislation that I think they're trying to push through. And if it passed, every augmented person in the world, basically, would be implanted with a control chip. Mm -hmm. And again, we like we mentioned with the ghettos, this would be kind of rationalized and explained away as we're going to prevent another AUG incident. We're just going to we're just going to keep the general populace safe. But you and I, Michael, we both know, and yeah. I think Adam Jensen knows very well, this is just this is just an ulterior motive of turning people into slaves. And, you know, it's an example of yet another cyberpunk hallmark and kind of a part of our main argument here. Technology is enslaving people, including Adam. But he what he's fighting to avert that dark future. He does. He's uh, struggling to prevent that from coming to pass. Uh, it's kind of like this controlled ship. Again, it's it's presented as a tool of not necessarily suppression, but protection. Like, OK, we right. need we need to implant these chips into people so that we'll be able to control them because everything will be fine. But that already happened in human revolution. You know, you got that chip that was supposed to be an upgrade 
Uh, but you had no idea what it does. And who's to think that this control chip wasn't going to do anything different? Like software has bugs. Right. What if this breaks? And or <laughs> if it says like, oh, if evil equals yes, then murder, murder, murder. And it's like at some point like that may happen. We don't know. So this idea of control and the concept that something like that can be controlled is somewhat of a fallacy because some way someone's going to try to break the rule. Mm-hmm. In some ways, almost like to kind of go back to like the you know human revolution title of the first first of the reboot series, <laughs> I guess uh, that revolution is a lot of ways inevitable, and no matter how many times you can control it or try to control it, someone will be there to fight you. So even though I guess one bit of inspiration in all of this darkness of the Deus Ex games is that no matter how much the Illuminati tries to control things that there will always be someone who will rise in every game. There is someone who is trying to, to trying to fight the big control of either the Illuminati MJ 12, which I guess is the Illuminati from the first game. Uh, But you have these kind of groups that who will, you know, the, the tighter of a grip they try to have on the world, someone will always try to break free. So I guess that's that's somewhat of an inspirational note. <laughs> yeah, in a in a world full of Illuminati stooges, just be the Adam Jensen that you want to see in the world. Let let him be an inspiration to you. Oh god. Just, just keep <laughs> keep fighting. Uh get get some cool sunglasses grafted onto your face that they they slide onto your eyes when you want them so you don't have to put them in your pocket. I mean, that's okay. out of all the augmentations Adam Jensen has is probably my favorite. It's just six shades. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> and that trench coat damn dude but no yeah be that adam jensen be the thorn in the side of the illuminati don't give up you know don't let him don't let him control you that's the real takeaway here yay but no, <laughs> but no, but no we, we going back to uh you know what what adam's trying to accomplish like you mentioned he, he is trying to be that one influence that pushes back on the forces of control and darkness and domination that kind of comes to a head toward the end of the game where you know, Adam is working, of course, with Interpol, but also the Juggernaut Collective to foil the Illuminati's plans. And in that process, he kind of gains contact with and gets closer to a person calling themselves Janus, the mysterious leader of the Juggernaut Collective. Uh, but unfortunately, we find out at the end of the game that even though Adam uh, kind of disrupted and uh, interrupted the plans of the Illuminati to uh, further the Human Restoration Act, he kind of he kind of uh, shut down that plan of theirs, but they had a backup plan, and their backup plan is that they are aware of his partnership with the Collective, and they are using him to expose Janus so he, she, or they can be eliminated. So again, he thinks he's stopping the Illuminati. He thinks he's done it. He thinks Human Restoration Act is done. I've kind of, I finally shut down a, a project of theirs, but no, he's just being used to uncover the leader of the Juggernaut Collective. It's it's wild. You you really feel bad for the guy. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a thing that that's also a thing that just persists throughout a lot of cyberpunk stories, both Deus Ex, Cyberpunk, the uh, you know tabletop RPG. Uh, the the Matrix is probably the most direct parallel similarity to this, where it's the idea of no matter how much you try to rebel, the idea of rebellion is already part of the plan. <laughs> That's yeah, man. Oh man, that's deep. That's crazy. Like yeah, the, like say it with me. The, the Illuminati. Illuminati. They they plan for people to fight back against them, and they also have plans to use those people against themselves. It's it's ridiculous, and and mm-hmm. you know that obviously includes Adam. So you know it, it kind of come it kind of brings us full circle here, where you know it tells us that even when Adam Jensen thinks he's working with the good guys. Like he thinks that the the Juggernaut Collective are some of the most trustworthy actors that he can align himself with. Like, like we've touched on, he really doesn't know who to trust, not even himself. But he thinks the Collective are the ones I need to help because they have the same enemies I do. But it, but it turns out his real enemies, the Illuminati, they're one step ahead of him and they're using him as a pawn. So he's really worked himself into a position where he serves as the ultimate chess piece for them. Yeah, and it's. It's it's kind of interesting. Well, it's, actually, I, I'd like to actually get just quickly get your perspective on this when because you're less familiar with the original games, which take place in sort of the future of the Deus Ex universe. When you were playing through these games, 
were you actually having the idea of that, okay, Adam Jensen has the possibility of saving the world? Or were you, is, was it always in the back of your mind that this may or may not fail like his plans yeah that's that's a great question i when i was playing um honestly when i finished up both human revolution and mankind divided both times i was kind of in the dark i was like i'm not sure what this leads to i'm not sure what this means it kind of feels like uh all of adam's efforts just kind of equated to shouting into the void it did kind of feel like the entire thing was an eternal struggle that was doomed to not necessarily be a failure, but to not accomplish much. Like he, Adam Jensen kind of, uh, to me symbolizes a bit of a Sisyphus figure where he's going to be always pushing a boulder up a hill. Yeah. Oh, and, that's good. Yes, thank you. But yeah, like I, I, I did have some hope, like, you know, Oh, he, he accomplished something and I beat the game and, you know, maybe I'll get some, uh, you know, some closure here, but then I find out, no, they, they know he's working with the collective and they're using that against him. You know, I just thought, oh, shit, well, there it is. Like, it's it's always going to be a cyclical thing where he's always trying to uncover these people, expose them and stop them. But they're always going to be somehow using him against himself. Yeah, no, that, that's that's an interesting example or an interesting perspective, rather, because uh, like I know how I, I know in a lot of ways how this world ends, not entirely, uh, but I almost knew the entire time it was almost like a tragedy <laughs> the, the idea yeah. of like oh well i'm doing all this stuff i know this ends in almost a world ending plague and uh everyone kind of being in a technological dark age right so how do we get from a to b <laughs> and so like that was more of a thing of like i because i had an idea even even when playing through uh human revolution in that this world was doomed to fail how is this going to fail and what what are the chess pieces going to do to set up that failure exactly yeah it's what what is that line from lord of the rings it's almost like how could the story end happily after everything that's happened yeah like yeah, like, yeah how could there be a happy ending after all of this you yeah know? and uh yeah that's that's a great point like it's not a bright spot <laughs> that yeah. these these stories usually go to go toward uh, moving on to sort of final thoughts here before we wrap up. Yeah, I want to touch back on um, this this idea of Adam as a hero and as a character that we sort of project ourselves onto. Or at least that, that's how I engage with him. I, I sort of tried to sympathize with him when I played as him. I uh, tried to think, like, what would I do and balance that with what would he do? And I, I, I keep thinking about that sort of uh, paradox we touched on earlier. You know, I as a player am directing Adam Jensen to make decisions and approach the challenges of this game world in certain ways. But as a character, he, he has no choices in front of him. He, it's, it's a really interesting paradox. And it, it just, do, it just does bring to mind that broader question of cyberpunk as a genre, bringing up this question of does technology really free you or does it make you a slave? And how would you know the difference even if you were aware of that question? Mm. So it's, it's something to really think about, like as we experience cyberpunk stories, as we, you know, look back on Deus Ex as a franchise, you know, that's, that's, I, I think that's a really important question to keep in mind. And it really puts Deus Ex in general, but these two games we've talked about specifically really puts them into perspective. Well, that about wraps it up. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please take a second to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, it really helps us grow the show. And be sure to connect with us on Instagram and Twitter at lore underscore party. And check out our YouTube page for fun bonus videos and some highlights. That's a lesson. <laughs> this has been Philosophy 101 with uh, <laughs> Connor and Michael. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> this class is a pass fail uh <laughs> <laughs> if you sat through this entire discussion you pass automatically i mean that's that's enough work <laughs> you only pass if you give us five stars on itunes <laughs> that's true yeah <laughs> <laughs>